Let's move on to capitalization. And we would think capitalization is very straightforward. And um, yeah, for the most part it is, but I think it's very easy to forget what those rules are, especially if you're not a native English speaker, you're a Chinese speaker, you learn to write Chinese, we don't have that kind of capitalization issue. So when you move over to English, gotta be a little bit more careful about capitalization. Of course, the first and most important thing to capitalize is always the first word in a sentence. Now, if it's not a sentence, then you do not need to capitalize it. If it is a sentence, you need to capitalize it. Remember, what is a sentence? The sentence is going to have a beginning and a period at the end. That first word at the beginning would be a capital letter at the first word, the first letter in the first word. But if you're writing something and it doesn't have a period at the end, then that is not a sentence and you do not need to have a capital letter. Now that depends on what you're writing. Sometimes we write things in a table, or we write things in short little lines, or we write headings, and they may or may not be capitalized, but you don't have to. It depends on that situation. Do not begin a sentence with a statistical term. Now we're going to talk more about this later, but for example, you would not begin your, se your sentence with a t-test or p-value, because if you did that, you would have to capitalize t or p. But t and p, in this case, should not be capitalized because they are statistical symbols. Do not begin a sentence with an abbreviation. So for example, here we have uh, DeWall 1994 concluded the following. And we would not want to say DeWall concluded the following. So that's not really an abbreviation though, is it? Um, let me just add very quickly. In your research writing, you should not be using abbreviations in general. You should not be using things such as, um, let me see, if I was to start a sentence, I guess I couldn't start a sentence this way, but I would not isn't, don't. Not only do you not begin a sentence this way, but in your research writing, you should not have abbreviations at all. In your report writing, in your business writing, you should be formal and write these words at, is not. Uh, do uh, do not do not abbreviate them you should you should not write don't you should write do not right so do not write don't okay? does that make sense do not write don't okay that sounds like a very confusing rule to follow doesn't it okay so capitalization the first word after a colon is another case and we kind of talked about this in a previous unit so if you have two sentences and those two sentences are independent. You can put them together how? You can use a comma and a conjunction, like comma and, remember? Or you could also use a colon, which are the two dots, no space before, one space after, and then the second sentence you begin with a capital letter. So in this example we can see the author made one point. That is a sentence. And then the second part is, no explanation that has been suggested so far answers all questions. So we have an independent clause here and an independent clause here. They could both be sentences. We could add and in this middle there, comma, space, and. But instead, we're going to use the colon. So we're going to have a colon, no space here, and then one space after. You see that? but you need to capitalize the first letter of the first word in that second sentence. Key point. That's not easy to remember, but it is a very special case, I think, because we don't often uh, jam two sentences together like that. Titles and headings inside of your research paper or your report, they're going to have capitalizations at the beginning. Now that depends, again, depends a lot on your rules. If your teacher says make it all capital or just make the first letter of the first word capital, then you must follow their rules. We're going to talk more about the APA's rules in the next section, in the next unit that is. Do not use capitalization for conjunctions, articles, and short prepositions that are inside of your title. So if you write a title, you don't want to make every word capital, such as the conjunctions and, or words like to, 
but you do want to capitalize verbs, nouns, adjectives, adverbs, and pronouns. So it gets a little bit confusing, but in general, it's the key words that are the subjects, the nouns, and the action that you capitalize. If you hyphenate a word, you need to capitalize both parts of it if it has a capital. Uh, let me see, do we have an example here? Here we go. Here. Memory in hearing impaired children, implications for vocabulary development. So here we have a good example of this hyphen, and then we make sure you capitalize the second word. Now this is a title of a research paper or an article or a book. Here's, an, here's the title of a book, History of Pathology. So we do not capitalize O, but you do capitalize the H and the P. And here's another example. In his article here, are Attitudes Toward Mental Health Workers. So this is the title here. And all of these words are capitalized. Ultrasonic visualizations are elicited from rat pop pups. This is the title of an article. And here we have all the words capitalized. And then our last example was this idea of this here. And you can see the word in is not capitalized. The word for is not capitalized. If you make a reference list at the end of your paper, that's going to have some special rules, and the MLA and the APA are different. So stick with it. In a couple lessons, we're going to be looking at that in excruciating detail. Okay, let's move on a little bit. More of our capitalization. When you make your reference list at the end of your research paper or you're in your book or in your report, that's going to have special capitalization too. And the APA approach and the MLA approach are different and in fact quite different, very different. We're not going to talk about it in detail today because this is another lesson in the future, but just very quickly look with me here and you can see some examples that will give you an idea in case you're in a rush, you want to learn something now. Here we have the APA style. Let me draw your attention very quickly here. First of all, we have the last name first and then the first name is abbreviated. So this D, maybe that's Diana. And here is Wellman H.M. And here is the H is his first name and M is the middle name. Please remember that for Westerners they have their family name, comma, first name, middle name. They have three names. Okay, so we go down here. We can see that we just repeated this for three authors. And we have this symbol here. Let's pay attention to this because later this will be important for us. And this is called the ampersand. Looks like this. The ampersand. It's on your keyboard above the number seven, usually. The ampersand. And of course it means and, right? It's equal to and. Now, those are the authors of the paper or book. And then here we have the date. So this is the publication date and then after the date a period. And then we have the title of the paper. In this case the title is Theory of Mind Development in Chinese Children, colon, a meta-analysis of false belief understanding across cultures and languages. That sounds like an inter interesting paper, but we don't have time to look at that now. But you can notice that the first letter T is capitalized, but then M, D, and then C in children is not capitalized. That is the APA's approach. They do not capitalize inside the title, just the first letter of the first word. And then down here we have a period ending the name of the article. Then we have the journal's name here and the issue number, the page number, and then a period. That is quite different from the MLA approach, which to begin with has the last name first, but then the first name is written out. So Lu D becomes Lu 
David. And then you can see that the publication year is not here, but rather the publication year is down at the end down here. And then you can also see that the title, capital T, capital M, capital D, capital well, C, of course Chinese is capital, they, it's all capitalized inside, just like it is inside the actual article. And we have a quotation mark here, a double quotation, which marks the beginning and the end of the article title. So this is quite different. We move things around. The APA style and the MLA style are really fundamentally different, although they kind of look the same. If you look quickly, you don't pay attention, but they are very different. Now, you may have software like EndNote, or I recommend another software package called Zotero that we're going to learn about. In any case, there's one thing to remember. It doesn't matter what software package you use. It doesn't matter where you get your information, your references from. You can get them from Google or online anywhere. When you copy that down, you need to double check to be sure that that formatting is correct for the style you're using. If you're a professor, if your school has told you you must use MLA, then you need to really understand how MLA is structured and you need to follow that. If you're using APA, you need to follow that. Or if your school, your journal, or your professor is using an APA but a little bit different, you need to follow that APA a little bit different. If you're using MLA but some modification, you need to follow that. Very, very often journals will have their own rules, but the base, the basic part will be either APA or MLA. They're going to either have this date be up here at the beginning in parentheses or they're going to have the date be down at the end like this. Those are kind of a fundamental difference. How they write out the name and how they write in the title and whether or not they use quotation marks, those are just the fundamental difference between APA and MLA. Words and articles, uh, headings and subheadings should be capitalized and headings inside of your research paper or your report should be capitalized if they're on the level 1 and 2. Heading levels 3, 4, and 5, you only capitalize the first letter of the first word. But if it's in level 1 and 2, you may be capitalizing the whole word. Again, this depends on your rules you're following for your school or for your journal. Table and Figure headings, the first word gets capitalized, and cross-references to headings in the same manuscript get capitalized. So for example here, if we say inside of our paper, we say C explained in the method section. So the method section is another section inside of our paper, and I'm telling you to go look there. This here is called a cross-reference, a cross-reference. I'm telling you to look somewhere else inside my same paper. Because this is the name of the section, then we capitalize it. Which is discussed in the data analysis subsection. So there's another section called data analysis. I'm going to cross-reference it. I need to use capitals. Of course, you know that proper names and trade names need to be capitalized. Names like uh, Freud, a Freudian slip, it, it, even though it's a it's a, a adjective here, um, yeah, an adjective, but it's still a person's name, so you're still going to be capitalizing it. Wilkes, Lamba, same thing. This is a noun phrase. Uh, I think Freudian slip is actually a noun phrase too. Wilkes, Lamba is a statistic, so it's a noun phrase, but it's still Wilkes, the person's name. Greco-Latin squares is also the same idea because it's the Greco meaning the Greek. Department of Sociology is a, another example of capitalizing the name because it's the name of a department. University of Washington, it's also a name. Psychology 101 is the name of a class, so that should be capitalized. Developmental psycho, Psychopathology, that should also be capitalized because it's the name of an area or a course. Plexiglass is a trade name. Actually, Developmental psycho Pathology is the name of a field of study or a field of research or a field of medicine. Plexiglass is a um, 
trade name. It's the name of a product. So things like, uh, this gets really confusing if you're trying to write down the name of a product, for example, an iPhone, but an iPhone is purposely written in a small i, isn't it, with a capital P? So check the product's name to be sure. Check the company's web page to be sure. Harina Monkey Chow, this is a food, so it's the trade name of the food, so it's capitalized. Xerox is the name of a company, so it's capitalized. Apple is the name of a company, so it's capitalized. Nouns with number or letters in a series, such as on day two of experiment four. So we have a series that are going together. This is day two and experiment four. We put them together, we can capitalize. During, travel, during trial five, the no delay group performed something. They did something. So here, again, this is in a series because we're using the comma, and we can capitalize that. As shown in table two, figure 3b and chapter four, same idea. This is in a series. It's a number that's inside the, the nouns with a number that's inside a series. So we go ahead and capitalize it. Grant AG02726 from the National Institute of Aging. And here we have the grant. And we're going to capitalize here. Trial three and item B. Well, this is going to be different, isn't it? Because this is not actually in a series. This is using a conjunction. Don't do this with variables either, such as trial n and item x, because they're not the actual thing. It's not number one or number two, so you would not capitalize trial or item here. You can capitalize titles of tests in psychology. So for example, advanced vocabulary test, ABT, Minnesota multiphasic personality inventory, group color word in interference test, and the author's mood adjective checklist. And this is a good example here because we have two actually coming together. So this is the name of a kind of a test, a checklist, and this is the name of a test. And these tests are probably not made up. They've been used by someone else before you. You are not the first person to use them. So it's easy to go ahead and check other published papers and see how this is capitalized. But if it's the name of a test or some kind of measure, then it will probably be capitalized. Now, of course, if you make your own measure, you make up your own test, then you could go ahead and capitalize that also. Names of conditions in groups. So for example, condition A, condition B. Derive factor names, such as mealtime behavior, factor four, factor six and seven. So here the word factor we're going to capitalize. Why? Because the factor four is the name that we have derived of the factor. We also gave the factor a name. It's called mealtime behavior. Now remember factor analysis, we take many uh, bits of data, many groups of data I should say, and then those groups of data get subgroup further together, or kind of like macro group together, I guess I should say. And so we may have 20 items here, and we may have 30 items here, and these 30 items go together and they become our one, well, number one, and this becomes our number two. And these are called factors. So factor one and factor two. Now if we just call them factor, we can use the capital F, we may give them a name, such as mealtime behavior. So this may be called mealtime behavior, and this may be called rest behavior, in which case we would give it a capital R, rest, and a capital B, behavior. Component one, big five personality factors. These are common examples. Also variables when in a formula format, such as this, sex times age times weight. And what do we mean here by times? Well, we're actually talking about interactions. So it could be times, but here it's by. And by. Sex by age by weight. 
but in any case, it could be a formula or it could be this idea of by. We're combining them together in a matrix somehow. Capital, capital, capital. And here we have a three by three by two groups by trials by responses. And of course, this is very straightforward. You cannot capitalize the numbers because numbers don't get capitalized, do they? But here what we're saying is that this three is this, and this three is this, and then this two is this. So here it is three by three by two, and these are the names, so the names get capitalized. Let me see, there's one more here. And here is a contrast, the sex, age, and weight variables. Just because it's a variable doesn't mean it gets capitalized. But in these cases, they do. So if you're just writing the sex, age, and weight variables, that is not capitalized.